guys, welcome to today's video. If you're wondering why I'm on the floor, I don't know what to tell you. I just wanted to show off this new little ottoman that we got. This video is actually one of the things that I wanted to do in order to explain how I've been furnishing this wonderful, wonderful studio apartment in New York City on a micro budget. As always, if you're enjoying the content, please like and subscribe and definitely leave a comment down below. And if you want to keep up with more of these fun antics, then definitely follow me on Instagram where I post pretty much every day incessantly and I just will not stop. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Before you even start thinking about what you want to do, really think about what is a good amount of money to spend. Because once you start spending, especially on a place that you call home, you won't want to stop. And I have to stop myself and ask myself these questions. How much space do I have? And how much space you have goes hand in hand with what do I actually need? The second thing to ask yourself is am I buying this furniture forever or am I just buying it for the duration that I'm in this apartment? Am I willing to spend money on things that will last me a long time and that I see in my forever home? And also am I staying in this physical location, the city for a while so that I can keep this furniture with me? Or am I only moving in here for a few months or am I moving into a rooming situation with other people? So I have to discuss how much should we put into this if we're only gonna keep the furniture for X amount of time? Another thing I like to think about is how does my budget spread over the 12 months of our lease? I think for us it's probably $100 a month and if I were going to subscribe to all of the things that we have for $100 a month, I would be really happy with that. So definitely try and break it down into more than just an abstract number, but thinking about it as how does this really factor into my space, how long I'm going to have it for, longevity of the item, and how much you're really going to value it in the 12 months that you're there. So the next thing is figuring out your style. Now, I would say personally, in terms of micro budgets and DIY stuff, there is kind of a limit on what you can do. Like, especially if you're reliant on Facebook Marketplace, you might not be able to find the most, you know, cohesive set of items. But you can narrow it down by trying to figure out what am I looking for? Am I looking for gold and marble? Or am I looking for dark wood, everything earthy, rustic? Am I looking for colors like velvet, you know, velvet tones or something like that? And this is going to really help you figure out exactly what you're gonna buy. I'm the kind of person who, if I see an amazing deal, I want to buy it. I would have to stop and say, okay, well, all of this other stuff I've got, it doesn't match with that. So this is a really great way of helping yourself make decisions. Another top tip I have for you guys is to stay as organized as possible. I made a spreadsheet and I wrote down all of our costs, the things that we were buying new and the things that we were going to buy secondhand. For example, we wanted very specific rugs and we just didn't feel like going through the effort of hunting down other people's rugs, not knowing like what had happened to them, who had been stepping on them, if any accidents had occurred on them. So we knew that we were going to buy our rugs, we knew that we were going to buy a fridge, and we ended up buying a dining set brand new too because we weren't sure if we would find something small enough for our apartment. But pretty much everything else we decided to buy secondhand. We knew what we were looking for because we weren't just thrown into this mess navigating all of these random things that people were selling. The other thing I have to say about those selling websites is that around the beginning of the month is when a lot of people are selling. Even if you move in the middle of the month, just give it two weeks and then go and try and buy things from people because everyone is trying to get rid of their stuff. I know for a lot of you youngsters, Facebook might be a thing of the past, but I pretty much exclusively use Facebook to go on Marketplace or look up different groups that are based in the town that you're moving to. You can find whatever you want on these Facebook groups. You just have to look and dig a little. As you guys can see, we have picked up so many amazing deals. Our coffee table, our lovely blue sofa that was just an essential piece for our apartment, these ottomans, and just so many more things, the mirror. We also ended up getting a bunch of different plants from this one person who had too many plants and he was just selling trimming, but it was a way discounted price. And Theo loves taking care of plants, so it worked out really well for us. And you can put together an entire cohesive look, especially for high value items like sofas, coffee tables, even like mirrors. These things are so excessively expensive that if you're willing to put in the work, you could easily find this exact same thing on Facebook Marketplace. And all you have to do is coordinate a pickup time and maybe negotiate the price because you can definitely haggle. So I would say if you are going to do this, then definitely go with a friend or, you know, meet up in a public location so that you're not putting yourself in danger. Thrift stores are amazing, you guys. And the nice thing is that you're giving back to the community 
Fenty as well. Actually, all two favorite pieces of art were from Goodwill. These were insane, okay? The one I chose was $3 and the one Theo chose was $7. We found these at Goodwill on a complete whim. I personally feel that if you want to be sustainable and fit within a micro budget, the best way of finding the greatest pieces is just by thrifting. Obviously, you're gonna be compromising time. Even before you move, potentially, you could start collecting things, which is what we did. And then when you get there, after you've got your cool pieces together, maybe including furniture that you've already ordered and furniture you've gotten from Facebook Marketplace, you can start to fill in the gaps with other things. This is a really great way of just being able to find things at a very, very cheap price. And the other thing is, I find that these items are usually just so fun. They're items that I would never have thought of buying in the first place. One thing I would suggest is trying to buy from small artists and local businesses, or even larger independent artists now. I guess Sarah Bobba, if you're familiar, is just a phenomenal artist. And I was so lucky that Theo gifted me a print and I had already bought my own print from her collection. That was a pay what you can initiative, but it was so nice to be able to finally own art from this person that I have been following for a long time and just love her art and her vibes in general. Another poster that we have is a Clockwork Orange poster. We got this from Cheapo Records, which is in Central Square, really close to where Harvard is. And this is just such a sentimental piece for us. And it wasn't even expensive, you guys. I think it was like $15 for this huge movie poster. Cheapo is one of the places that Theo and I went to on, I think, our third day. This is just like a poster that that has so many memories and again was really cheap. And then the final things that we bought were these like tapestries that we got from Chinatown. We decided to go into Chinatown a couple of weeks ago after we saw that there were all these anti-Asian like attacks happening. And we just wanted to go in solidarity and spend the day in Chinatown and you know, help support local businesses. When we were walking around, we saw that there was this little shop and they had these amazing tapestries and they were just so lovely and beautiful. And getting to support that, I would just much prefer to do something like that than order things off of Amazon. I don't know, I feel good giving my money to people who are in the local community and doing their best, especially when they're marginalized communities. And then lastly, Bethany, who is over here with me, we got her at Brattle Bookshop, which is in Boston as well. Again, quintessential place to go to if you're in Boston. It's a rare bookstore. Theo was just so allured by her to purchase a really lovely piece of art that no one is ever gonna have. I thought that was an amazing investment. So those are the little things that you can pick up from around your local area to support and from the other places that you've been to. And the other thing that you can do is every neighborhood in New York has a buy nothing group. I'm gonna leave it over here. And pretty much every day, there are around 10 people posting saying, hey, I have these things and I don't want them anymore. And they just give them away for free. And we got one piece of artwork from someone who gave away that piece of art for free because it didn't suit them anymore. And I just think this is such a lovely way of sharing things and of ensuring that the things that you might have loved once upon a time are not just gonna get thrown into a dumpster at the end of the day. Instead, they're gonna go into a nice loving home. And I already know that there are a bunch of things that if I realize I'm not a huge fan of them, I I will just put on that group because it's also just so much easier than selling because people are always happy to take things for free. And now I have a lovely South African tapestry that I never would have gotten on my own. Now, when it comes to DIY, there are a couple of really easy things that you can do. For example, if you want to get plants, a really easy thing that Theo and I did was we had a little pop painting session, that's really hard to say, a plant pot painting session. And basically we both really wanted to have nice pots and the kind of terracotta pots that usually come in Home Depot and places like that just didn't really match our aesthetic. So instead of going online and buying like really expensive pots, because who knew that plant pots would be so expensive, right? Instead of doing that, we decided to just buy the cheap terracotta pots. And then we went to the clearance section in Home Depot, found the cheapest paint, which happened to be white and this like pale blue that kind of fit our theme anyways. And we went home and we painted them. And for some of the parts, we even decided to do cool textures. So we used plaster to add texture to the sides. And then I just kind of did whatever designs I wanted on the part in paint. And I don't know guys, like you guys can comment down below, but I really feel like these pots looked like they were more than the three bucks we paid for them. And then one of the other things that I've been doing is crocheting. You guys know I love to crochet. So I have been trying to crochet this tapestry. I'm actually not sure if it's gonna be done by the time this video goes up. Unsurprisingly, I did not crochet the tapestry on time, but here is what I have so far. I've also crocheted bags and jumpers. I got the idea for this tapestry from this other YouTuber. She had made this really cool blanket. So I just thought, hey, 
I can crochet, I like crocheting. It's also a de-stressing activity for me. I might as well just crochet exactly the thing that I want so I can hang it up on the wall instead of just buying some random thing that I'm not super jazzed about. Another really quick and easy thing that you can do in your apartment is make over specific spaces. When you come to New York and you're looking at apartments, you'll quickly realize that finding your dream apartment is kind of impossible. There's always something wrong. For example, I love our apartment so much, but the kitchen has historically pissed me off. It's just annoying. I don't like the color of the wood. I don't like the color of the cabinets. I feel like they look cheap. I don't like the color of the counter. It looks weird and dingy or dingy. I don't know how to say that word. I decided, okay, instead of letting this be a deal breaker because I wasn't going to let this apartment go by, I decided that I would invest the time and a tiny bit of money into just making it over so that it finally looked good. I ended up ordering these sticky decal things online as well as these backsplash tiles. All I had to do was remove them and put them down. And if you just, you know, have an afternoon spare, you could get the whole thing done. You guys can find exactly the pattern that you want online because there are so many options. You could even make over your walls or make over your desk. Or for example, I decided to do this kind of white marble look on the counter and in the kitchen because around the apartment, I had also gone for a white marble look. What that means is, remember how we talked about a cohesive style then you could get a decal that looks exactly the same and suddenly everything in your apartment will tie in together you will have done this at a much cheaper cost than it would have cost you to get everything to look the same in the first place consider DIYing some art yourself this was just a painting that I started on a whim I really think that you can paint whatever you want just go online find a reference photo and paint something at the end of the day art is supposed to be about having fun and you might find the process really enjoyable or getting creative. Maybe you get a jigsaw puzzle and you glue it together and put it in a frame. Maybe you do some collage artwork. Basically, my general rule of thumb is I feel that if something is in a frame, it tends to just look cooler and more fancy. So if there is something that you really, really want, but you can't get it, then feel free to just try and make it yourself. At the very least, go online, download a print or you know, find a picture, a stock photo that you like. Just go print it at Staples. It'll be way cheaper than buying a a framed print and slap it in a frame. And that kind of reminds me of another point that I wanted to make. Frames can be really expensive. We found that there was a sale at Michael's and they were having a uh, frame 60% off. And so I would highly recommend Michael's for frames just because we were able to get six different frames for less than a hundred dollars. And if you know anything about frames, frames are really expensive. So that was an amazing deal. I would try and wait for deals like that. Or again, take the Goodwill approach. Maybe you thrift something that you don't even like and then keep the frame instead because the price might be just worth the hassle. That is all I have to say for today's video. I know that apartment hunting and decorating can be really stressful but honestly it is the most satisfying thing when you're finally done and you can look around and be like whoa I did this on my own and so I wish you guys the best of luck. I know that you will do an amazing job. Please comment down below if you have any tips on how you decorated your apartment and I am so excited to share my apartment tour with you guys hopefully in the next few weeks as we start to just you know get this ish wrapped up and also clean because it's a little bit gross down here I'm not gonna lie okay have a good day guys bye